Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Smoked Pork and Apple Crepes. Well today we're cooking up some sweet and savory crepes, which is kind of the beautiful thing about crepes. You can go pretty much any direction you like with the flavor profile. Full savory, full sweet, or somewhere in the middle, which is what we're doing today. And the great thing about a dish that versatile is you can please just about everyone with it, even Ricky Bobby with his broken arm. Now the first thing we're gonna do today is get the smoker fired up, and we're smoking today on the Yoder Smokers Loaded Wichita Offset. We're gonna get this coal bed going with a chimney of lump charcoal. As soon as that's red hot, we'll dump it out and be ready to get some of our split wood on top. Now while the smoker's coming up to temp, we're gonna get this pork butt prepped and ready to go on. I've already trimmed it for the most part. We're gonna leave the fat cap on today. We're keeping it pretty simple. I'm just gonna hit it with a few really good seasonings, but honestly, you could do this any way you like to do your pork butts. And if you really wanna dive in deep on this, go ahead and search our channel because we've got some pretty in-depth videos on how to trim up your pork butt. So while we are leaving a good portion of this fat cap on just for that thermal barrier and for a little bit extra fat in here, I am gonna go ahead and score it just to allow some of that seasoning to penetrate through. On the opposite side, you've got your crevice here that normally holds all that uh, pretty much yucky stuff you don't want to chew on. We've gone ahead and cleaned all of that out. So we're going to start seasoning up now. And the first thing we're going to do is get a little bit of sriracha down for a binder. don't need a lot and honestly this won't affect the flavor drastically in the end so you could use just about anything oil whatever goes well with your flavor profile that you're going for today and then we're going to layer on two rubs today the first being the lane's barbecue honey sriracha and the second the plowboy's yard bird which is just obviously one of our go-to barbecue rubs honey sriracha is going to add a little bit extra sweetness not terribly spicy uh, so I wouldn't worry about that if that's a concern for you. It's also just got a lot of great savory flavors in it, like that garlic. So we're going to start with a base layer of that honey sriracha. And then we'll come in with some of that color on top from the yard bird. All right, we'll just kind of clean up what's on the board so we're not wasting anything. And that can just set just like it is until our smoker is ready for the meat. We're ready to dump our coal now. Charcoal's gonna go in the back half of the firebox as usual so that we can have a small hot fire contained to the back, never creating any acrid smoke. We keep the airflow open just a little bit more. And we're going to be cooking with a combination of apple and pecan wood today. Our smoke's cleaned up now. The smoker is warm. We're sitting at about 250 degrees on the ambient temperature inside here. So we're going to position this butt kind of close to the firebox with that bone in toward the fire. Our pork butt's just been smoking away and we've achieved a really nice bark on the outside, which is kind of the goal for this portion of the cook. Now we're gonna wrap this up to finish it off, uh, but how long you're cooking initially open just depends on all kinds of factors. What kind of grill are you using? Uh, obviously we're on an offset today, so it gets dark a little bit faster, takes on smoke a little bit quicker than say if you're using a pellet grill or an electric smoker. Um, so today, you know, we're going to say five to six hours is probably about right. Our internal temperature is sitting at around 155. Not that that's super important, probably give or take 10 or 20 degrees there is fine. We're really just looking for the color right now. But this is the bark we're talking about. It's not gotten too dark yet. Still got a nice kind of golden and red color going on. A little bit of mahogany. We're going to stop some of that coloration process now by wrapping it up. Now you'll notice we didn't inject our pork butt today and part of the reason is because I knew we were going to wrap it. So what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of apple cider to the wrap. Because especially when I'm doing pulled pork, I know that this liquid's going to stay in the foil until the very end. And then once we shred this pork up, it's just going to soak up all of that juice that we would have injected anyway. So we're kind of saving ourselves a step here. 
So I got two sheets of foil. I'm gonna try and work around the meter probe here. So we can keep tabs on that. We just wanna make sure we get this fully enclosed as tight as possible. Go two sheets in case we have any punctures. A little extra protection there. All right, right back onto the smoker with it. While we're at it, we'll go ahead and roll over another log. Got some apple that's been preheating in there. I throw a split of pecan in the front just to warm up. That way, as you can see right here, we get immediate combustion. As soon as that wood hits the coal bed, no acrid smoke, all clean. Well, it's been about two and a half hours since we wrapped our pork butt, and right now it's temping over 205 on the internal. We're gonna open this thing up and look at it, but I'm pretty sure that blade bone's just gonna be sliding out, and this pork's gonna be ready to pull. Ooh. That's a beautiful sight. Look at all those juices that we've contained by wrapping this in the foil. If we look for this blade bone back here, we just give it a little tug, comes right out clean. That's a thing of beauty. Now we're gonna do a little cooking in the firebox, our apple compote and our crepes. So I'm just adding a little bit, woo, a little bit more charcoal. And we're gonna slide our griddle right in here. Next, we're gonna to put together the batter for our crepes so that it can rest for about 20 minutes before we actually cook the crepes. So we're gonna start with a couple of eggs here. Get these whisked up and then we'll add a cup and a half of milk. Next, we've got a cup of flour. We're gonna do all of our dries here in one bowl. Four teaspoons of smoked maple smoked turbinado sugar, and probably just about a quarter of a teaspoon of smoked salt. So we'll just go ahead and make sure that those are kind of mixed and well incorporated. And then we're gonna add our wet ingredients to the bowl. Now inevitably we're gonna be creating some bubbles here and work in this gluten just a little bit. And that's why we want to let this rest for a little while before we actually cook the crepes. Uh, it's important to make sure you're whisking out any lumps. So we'll give that a good whisk just to make sure that we're getting the salt and the sugar dissolved. And then we can kind of just set this aside. This is going to be the easiest container to pour it out of as we make our crepes. So I'm going to transfer it there now. Now let's go ahead and get the knife work out of the way for the apple compote. We're gonna start with a couple large Granny Smith apples. Take off the top and the bottom as so we're gonna get these peeled up. We're gonna take the skins off and get these diced down pretty small. So just cut around the core. And then we'll take these pieces. And again, I want this to be a fairly small dice. Next, we're gonna do some fresh ginger. We just need to get this peeled and then grated down. We're looking for one teaspoon. Then we've got some citrus. We're gonna do about a teaspoon each of lemon zest and lemon juice. All right, this is gonna do it for the table work so we can head back over to the grill. So we're gonna start with four tablespoons of butter in the skillet. So let that butter bubble up a little bit, then add in our diced apples. We've also got a bit of cinnamon and nutmeg. We'll add that fresh ginger. And then for our sweeteners, we're gonna use some of the maple smoked turbinado sugar. Do equal parts that and maple syrup. So this is definitely where we add the sweet to our sweet and savory crepes.
Also gonna give this just a, a little shake of that whiskey barrel smoked salt. And then we're gonna let our apples cook down and s until they're starting to get nice and tender. So just a few minutes there to get those apples softened up. At this point, we're gonna add in our lemon juice and about a tablespoon of bourbon just to finish, eh, a teaspoon of bourbon just to finish it off. We'll let that alcohol cook out of there. We're left with just that great kind of vanilla bourbon flavor. And as you can see, there's a lot of juices going on in here. Uh, that's how I want it for these crepes. If you prefer to tighten it up, a little bit of cornstarch slurry will do that for you. Uh, but I really want this to work almost as a syrup on top of our crepes. So at this point, we're ready to take this off. We're gonna transfer it to a bowl. We'll rinse out our skillet and we'll make our crepes. So ideally we want the pan right around 375. We're maybe about 20 degrees warmer than that. So we might just take this away from the heat for a moment here. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of duck fat and then we'll come in with our first crepe. So essentially as soon as it hits the pan, we wanna rotate the pan around all the way to the edges. So maybe just about a minute there. You can see that it's gotten solidified all the way across. We should have some just really light browning. Yeah, that's really beautiful. But at the same time, we don't want this crisp. It should still be pliable. So another minute or so, again, just super light browning, but totally pliable. Just land it on a plate and cover it with a damp towel. And we're gonna repeat this about seven more times. So now we've got our crepes done, we've got our compote done. The only thing that's left to do is to shred up our pork butt that's been resting. And then we're gonna put a little crisp on it back on the griddle, just like you would do at home if you were using leftover pulled pork. So that pork's just been resting in its juices. Oh yeah, that is fully ready to be shredded. And we've got great bark, even after the wrap, really nice texture on the outside of this pork. We're just gonna take those juices and drizzle them right over the top. And you see all this pulled pork just soak that up until there's no liquid left in the pan. We'll get some texture on there. All right, that's definitely warmed back up. We got some good crisp, some good texture. Now there's a number of ways that you could go ahead and prepare your crepes. Uh, we could put pork right in the center and roll these up and serve the apples on top, which is a really nice little crepe burrito there. Or really what most of the time I would prefer to do is just go ahead and fold these just to fold them up and go ahead and top everything over the crepes. Get your apples, get that syrup. And that's it, let's get a taste. Apples and pork, what a classic combination. And then that chewy little crepe right there, the perfect starchy base for it all. Certainly sweet, certainly salty, a little bit of smoke, pretty decent smoke profile on that. And then these tender little crepes are so nice. This could be lunch, this could be dinner, this could be breakfast. 
can do whatever you want with it. I'm out of things to say. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.